Today, I'm going to be playing against pros featuring the USA National Champion, a New York Regional Champion, and a three times Texas Regional Champion. Keep watching. We all competed at Catan USA Nationals 2019 with Ian Dembski winning it all. Let's take a look at this board. Where would you go as the first position? I posted on Instagram, where would you go and why? I post difficult boards on Instagram and sometimes exclusive short videos, so make sure to follow me there. The link is inside the description below. In the first position, we have Hawkeye playing black. He's qualified for the USA Nationals three times in a row and has won three regional tournaments in the Texas area. He decides to take the 8310. It gets Hawkeye the rarest resources on this board. The brick is very valuable since there's so much wood. The ore is also very valuable since there's a lot of wheat and the ore is very scarce on this board. Also, ore and wheat naturally pair together, so having the 10 wheat and the 3 ore are perfect. Although it's not the highest producing spot on the board, Hawkeye anticipates value by selling the brick at a high price. In the second position, we have RJ Herm. He's a recent New York regional champion, and he places on the 693. Personally, I don't agree with this choice, but he agrees with me that this was a mistake. I think it's a mistake because you have too much wheat and there's not a very good second settlement that goes well with the 693. Instead of taking the 693, I would consider the options such as a 643 or the 5910. The 693 doesn't have very many good port options, and there's too much wheat that you can't use. In the third position, we have Ian, the current USA national champion. Brown decides to place on the 643. He places here because he gets the wood, the pair with the brick, and he gets the valuable source of ore. Overall, it's a strong standalone pick. Since there are multiple wheat sheep spots, you can place on the 634, anticipating to get wheat and sheep when it comes back to you. Overall, the 634 is a pretty safe choice. However, the hard part is where do you point your road? You can point your road upwards, but there's a risk that someone might take the 84. If you point your road to the right, there's a chance that someone could always go on the 61112 and use a free road to cut you off, although that's unlikely. And lastly, pointing left lets you double up on the rare ore and get you access to sheep that you don't currently have. Brown makes a decision and points his road to the left. Now it's my turn. Where would you place and why? I want you to pause and comment down below where you would place your settlements right now. I place my settlements on the 8410 and the 5910. What? Three resources? Let me explain. I chose this because it gives me a strong sheep port, a 3 1 port, I'm close enough to connect, I get strong production, and to have great numbers. In addition, I'm able to lock a lot of the sheep from other players. Playing a game with three resources is difficult. So I have to make sure to trade hard and aggressively. I point my road right on the 5910 because pointing it downwards is redundant, as I already have a road and a settlement to the 3 1 port with the 8 4 10. I decide the 9 12 is better than the 9 wood. However, I do risk having a race with someone else. Now it goes back to Brown. Brown places on the 4 5 11. This makes it so if anyone places on the 5 wheat, the 5 wheat becomes triple shared. Whenever a hex is shared by three people or triple shared, it's unlikely to be blocked because three of the players on the hex would not be blocking it. However, by going on the 4511, your only expansion spot is a 911, which cuts off the other expansion spot on the 311. Next, we have Red. Red places on the 6512, and he points his road downwards, racing me for the 912. He's basically only on two resources wood and wheat. If Red can get himself on the 912 and the wood port, he might just have a winning shot at this game. Overall, playing with basically two resources that don't have high trade value is something I don't recommend. I think the biggest issue Red will have to deal with is having too much wheat in their hand that they can't do anything with. Unless the 12 rolls often inside this game, it's going to be difficult for Red to succeed. Lastly, it rotates back to Black, Hawkeye. He places on the 8-3. But before we start this crazy game, this was played on Colonist.io. Colonist.io is a free online Catan site where you can set up and play a game of online Catan under 10 seconds. All you have to do is go on Colonist.io, press create, then send the link to your friends, or simply add bots and press play. Colonist.io makes money through non-intrusive ads. So go ahead and play some quick online games of Catan while supporting an amazing group of people. With that, the game begins. Hawkeye rolls an 8, instantly giving him a road a wood and a brick. He decides to drop the road towards the 8-4. That's a great expansion spot, getting him more brick which is going to be very valuable in this game, as there's so much wood. He also gets himself access to a 3-1 port. Red rolls a 7 on their turn, and since we're in a race, it makes sense for Red to be putting the robber on me and blocking me. 
as you want to be robbing the person you're racing against. If I am able to build on the 912, Red will pretty much lose this game, since they don't have very many spots to go, and their setup is already pretty weak. On my turn, I offer two cards for a brick. If Black says yes to this deal and I give him two cards, it allows me to win the race. But in reality, the 912 isn't that useful for me. It's way more useful for Red. So if Hawkeye did take that trade, I would say to Red, listen, I now have a road in hand, and if I build this road on the 912, your game is pretty much over. So I cannot build on the 912 and build somewhere else if you can give me a good trade right now. And if Red says no, I would build a road onto the 912. However, Hawkeye says no to that deal, so none of that happens. Black rolls a 7 on his turn, and he puts it on the 6 wood, and he takes from Red. I think he takes from Red because he has an ore in hand. Red rolls a 5, giving everyone wheat, except for Hawkeye. Brown rolls a 6, but it's blocked. It's my turn. I roll a 7. I decide to block the 3 ore. I want to try to block 2 people if possible. Although the 3 ore seems quite weak, it doesn't make sense to block the 8 brick, as if I block it, there's not going to be much brick inside the game, which makes it harder for me to trade for. Instead, I'd rather just block a valuable ore spot, preventing anyone from getting early cities. On Red's turn, they're able to do a 4 for 1 for a brick and build a road to the 912. Once again, this 912 spot is a lot more valuable to Red than it is to me. My first priority would be getting on the 3 1 port or the sheep port. It's Brown's turn and they roll a 7. And they move the robber back on the 8 wood and take from Hawkeye. It's my turn and I roll a 12. That's a rare ore for red. I tried trading for rare ores, but none of the trades go through. There's also no brick inside the game, so I'm forced to hold. It's Hawkeye's turn, and he rolls an 8, and he gets a valuable brick. Although Hawkeye is only at 2 cards, he's trying to trade away the brick because he knows everyone's wanting brick. If a 7 is rolled, people will be robbing black, searching for that early brick. So, if he can trade it away instead, it'll avoid early robbers, which is what he's doing. That's quite clever. So, he's able to get a good trade, a 2 for 1 deal for that brick. I'm also willing to do a 2 for 1 trade since I'm at 7 cards. So this does slightly reduce the chance that I get 7'd out by the robber. Overall, that was a really good trade by Hawkeye. It's Red's turn and he rolls an 8. It's Brown's turn and he rolls a 9. I roll a 7. And once again, I'm looking to block 2 people. But I also know that Black has a brick in hand. At the same time, I just traded a Black, a Wheat, and a Sheep. So, they either have a settlement in hand, or they are very close to a settlement. So it makes sense for me to try to block the 3 ore, and take from black, breaking the settlement, and because I have a good chance at stealing the brick. I get lucky, and I get the brick. Now here's a decision. Do I build a road and settlement to the sheep port, or do I build a road and settlement to the 3-1 port? I decide to build the road and the settlement on the 3-1 port, because it makes my overall setup a lot more flexible. The 8 wood has already been blocked several times, and if I doubled up on the 8 wood, it would make the 8 wood a much bigger robber magnet. It allows me to start using my useless woods and converting them into something useful. An 8 is rolled, which gives Hawkeye another road. He has a settlement in hand. On my turn, I roll a 6. There's not that much I can do at 6 cards, but I bet I could have ported my wood for a brick or an ore. I tried spitting out some trays just to see what's out there but none of those trades go through. It's okay to offer some trades and see what trades people are willing to take. You don't necessarily have to take those trades, but it's good to figure out what people's intentions are throughout the game. So, even though I'm trading for wheat and it doesn't really do anything for me, I'm just searching for information and don't necessarily have an intention to take that trade. On Black's turn, he rolls another 3. I'm quite glad I blocked the 3 ore, as I've denied 4 ore inside the game. On Red's turn, he rolls a 9. Red offers a wheat for a wood. I ask myself, what is he trying to do with this trade? And I say that out loud. Hawkeye helps me out and fills in the picture. I mean, he's got 4 for 1 it for a brick for the settlement. Because he's got the sheep he stole from you. So, I decide that giving Red a settlement isn't too bad. Typically, I'll demand more cards, but I'm already at 7 cards, and I don't want to bring myself to 8 cards where I can get 7 out by the robber. But wait, Red 4 for 1's their wood for an ore and drops the city? Shoot, I just gave a 1 for 1 trade and allowed Red to get a city. That was definitely a mistake. I needed to use my own brain and track more carefully by myself to figure out what other people's intentions are. This mistake could have been easily avoided if I tracked my opponent's cards more easily. It's my turn, and I roll a 7. I put the robber on the 6th wood, and I take from red since they just got a city. I port 3 of my cards for a brick. However, I think I should have considered porting for an ore instead. In general, whenever using a port, you want to be porting for rare resources. But in this scenario, since I can get potential trades with Hawkeye for the brick, 
the ore is more rare. Therefore, I think porting for an ore might have been a stronger play. Black rolls a 3, giving me black and brown ore. Red rolls a 5, giving everyone wheat, except for Hawkeye. It's my turn, and I also roll a 4. There are several bricks inside this game, and I verbally propose some trades, but none go through. It's Black's turn, and he rolls a 12. Wow, this is a great roll for Red, getting them two rare ores. Black drops a road to the 10 wheat. It's Red's turn, and he rolls an 8. Once again, he's offering wheat for wood. This time, I need to make sure to be careful. I already know he has two ores in hand, and he's on tons of wheat. Although Red is basically on two resources, someone having two cities, while no one else has any cities, is quite scary. No trades go through, and Red 4 for ones their wheat, and builds a road towards the 6-2. It's Brown's turn, and he plays a knight card. He puts the knight onto the 8 brick, and steals from Hawkeye. Brown drops a road and a settlement onto the 3-11, doubling up his ore. It's my turn, and I roll an 8. The 8 brick is blocked. I already have a settlement in hand if I use a 3 to 1 port, but I'm trying to get a cheaper deal through black. I offer him a wheat and a sheep for a brick, but in hindsight, I think that's a little bit too good of a deal for black. I think that deal would be a little bit more balanced if I gave black a different set of 2 cards, or not traded with him at all. On black's turn, he ports all of his wood and drops a city on the 8 3 10. That's quite a strong city. Although black is leading in production, on Red's turn, they do a 4 for 1, and they build a city. Two 6s are rolled, giving Red a total of 8 cards with only 2 rolls. That's quite powerful. Although Red and Black have cities, and are beating me in production, I'm still in an okay spot. Since I have a port strategy, whenever I'm blocked, it reduces my production by quite a bit. So, if I'm behind the other players, this makes it so I won't be getting blocked at all. So instead of getting cities first, and then getting a port, I do the reverse and get a port first, and then I get my cities. This way, I look a lot less scary at the beginning and won't be blocked. And once I upgrade to cities, I'm going to have a lot of flexibility and it's going to be too late for my opponents to stop me. On my turn, I start porting for ores as I've already gotten my two ports. Red is at 10 cards, offering me a wood and a wheat. I say yes to this deal because it actually completes a city in my hand. And this time I was tracking, I know that Red is only going to be building a settlement. So I take that trade, anticipating giving Red a settlement and me getting a city instead. However, Brown sees that I'm taking the trade. Brown decides to take the trade also in order to steal the trade away from me. I think we and Brown could have worked out a deal and said, instead of both of us saying yes to this trade and only one of us getting it, how about both of us decide not to trade with Red and they're stuck at 10 cards with wood and wheat with no ports. Unfortunately, the trade did go through and Red builds a settlement on the 6-2. On Brown's turn, they drop a road towards a 4-11. On my turn, I roll a 7 and I'm forced to discard my hand. I decide to move the robber on the 6 wood, and I take from red where he's at 5 points in 2 cities. However, I think there's some merit in blocking the 3 ore, or potentially the 8 brick, and stealing from Hawkeye. As I knew Hawkeye had wheat, and if I was able to steal a wheat from Hawkeye, I would be able to get a city. But red 100% had wood. Not getting a city, I decide to pass. Hawkeye builds another road towards a 5-10. On red's turn, they roll another 12, another powerful 2 ore for red. It's brown's turn, and he rolls a 4. He drops another road, committing towards the 411, then passes. It's my turn, and I roll an 8. Now, I want you to pause here and comment down below if you would like. Would you buy two development cards, or would you get a city? And if you get a city, do you port your woods, or do you port your sheeps? I decide to get a city. I think getting a city here is essential. Two of my opponents already have cities, and I'm falling quite behind in production. I also decide to port the sheep instead of the wood, because 8 and 4 recently rolled. This makes it so there's a lot of brick inside the game, and that means the wood is valued at a higher price. Therefore, I want to keep the woods on the off chance that I can sell it to my opponents. However, this does make it so I have a higher chance to get 7'd out by the robber. Personally, I still think porting the wood to ores and getting a city that way is better. On Hawkeye's turn, he drops a settlement on the 5'10". Red rolls another 12, getting them another valuable 2 ore, and they drop a third city on the 6-2. However, as red, I would try to start buying development cards over trying to get a city. It's Brown's turn, and he decides to solo block my 10 sheep. Ouch. Getting blocked as a port player really hurts your production. Luckily, I'm able to roll a 7 and move the robber. I want to quickly talk about the port strategy's strengths and weaknesses. The strength of playing a port strategy like this is its flexibility. I'm going to be able to port my cards for whatever I want. I can port my cards for the ore that I'm missing if I want to start buying a lot of development cards to go for largest army. Or I can port my cards for a brick 
if I want to start porting for a lot of roads and go for the longest road. So the strength of the port strategy is its flexibility. But what are the weaknesses of a port strategy like this one? The weakness is production. I'm converting all my resources three to one or two to one. So that means even if I have 10 sheep in hand, I only have around five real cards because I'm gonna be porting that sheep two to one. So my production is divided in two or it's divided in three, depending on how much I use the port. To compensate for this, you need to be getting your cities and production first, then pursue the win condition of least resistance. So if largest army is being hotly contested, then pursue longest road instead. On Red's turn, he rolls a seven and he puts it on the eight brick and it steals from Hawkeye. It's Brown's turn and he wisely decides to block the 10 sheep. Blocking the 10 sheep hurts me quite a bit as it reduces my production and flexibility significantly. It's my turn and I roll an eight. For some reason, I pass at seven cards. I think I should have ported my woods and other cards for ores and then pass. Holding at seven cards and not doing anything is quite dangerous. It's Black's turn. He drops a road and asks for a brick for a sheep and he trades with Brown. Then he buys a development card. I'm not too sure about that sequencing. Typically, your turn sequencing should be trade first, buy your development cards if you're going to be buying any because those are random and you're not sure what you can get. Then you want to be building the things you're sure that's going to happen, such as your road, settlements, and cities. It's Red's turn and he offers me a sheep for two wheats. I know that I'm giving him a development card, but I'm fine with this. If I can survive on my turn without getting seven out, me getting two wheats helps out my hand by a lot as previously I didn't have any wheats. So I'm willing to take that calculated risk and give Red a development card and having the potential reward of having a huge turn. Black then builds a settlement on the 411. It's my turn and I have 13 cards. What would you do here? Would you buy development cards? Would you get a city? Or would you do something else? Are you going to be using the woods to port or the sheep to port? As I said earlier, it is absolutely essential as a port strategy to upgrade your production first, as that allows you to amplify your production and therefore flexibility, while it reduces the port strategy's weakness of not having enough production. However, I do make a slight mistake here, and I decide to use my sheep instead of my wood to port for the city. Using the wood instead of the sheep is better, because first of all, I can get more potential trades with red, as red doesn't have any sheep, but they produce wood. Second of all, my sheep is blocked. Therefore, at the moment, it's a lot rarer and I need to be keeping some inside my hand because I won't be getting easy access to it. Lastly, since I have both my cities up and have strong production, it's time for me to choose my win condition of the path of least resistance. I see that there aren't that many development cards bought or knights played, so I'm going to be wanting to buy development cards to try to go for the largest army. One of the resources you need for development cards is sheep and not wood. Red rolls a 10. Ouch. That 10 sheep being blocked has blocked a total of nine sheep so far. Brown rolls a two, giving red another two ore. These twos and twelves are performing very well for red. On Brown's turn, he trades a brick and a sheep for an ore with red. And with that, Brown buys a development card. I roll a seven on my turn, and I'm glad to have the robber off of me. I decide to put the robber on the eight brick. I think black is doing quite well and has potential to take the longest road and the largest army. I end my turn. Then black plays a knight and moves it onto the 5 wheat and takes from red. He rolls a 7 and moves it onto the 6 wood and steals from red again. Black thinks red is very strong, which they are. However, keep in mind red is still basically on 2 resources with a ton of wheat that they can't get rid of. So even though they have 3 cities, it's going to be hard for red to utilize that production. It's red's turn and he rolls a 10. He offers me a wood for 2 wheat. I decide to take this trade, even though I know Red is going to be building a settlement if I take this trade. I think Red's path to victory is very difficult. They are going to have to compete in the largest army race, with only wood and wheat. And from now on, I'm going to be making sure to be buying a lot of development cards. I also take that trade because I don't have much wheat in my hand. Once again, if I'm able to get to my turn without rolling a 7, I hold a massive reward. Lastly, I induce my opponent to build a settlement. If you think about it, a settlement requires a wood, brick, wheat, and sheep. But a development card requires an ore, wheat, and sheep. Two of those cards overlap. If I can induce my opponent to build a settlement now, then it means my opponent will have less cards to be buying development cards. What that means for me is that I have less competition to race for the largest army. So it gets to my turn safely. 
And I'm at 16 cards. What's the play? Do you buy development cards? Do you buy a city? Or do you get a settlement? I buy development cards over trying to build roads because Black has already committed several roads and Brown can always connect their roads to try to go for Longest Road. In addition to that, I really don't have that much space to fight for Longest Road. Therefore, buying development cards and fighting for Largest Army is a path of least resistance at the moment. So, I port and buy one development card. Nice, a monopoly. I decide to port for another ore, buying more development cards. I get a year plenty, or a plus two. Lastly, I buy another development card and I get a knight. The year of plenty isn't actually that great since I'm searching for knights to lock the Largest Army. It's Black's turn. He rolls a 4. He buys a development card, then builds a road. Red rolls a 4. Brown rolls a 7 on his turn and takes from me. He does a 4th for one for an ore and buys a development card himself. It's now my turn and I play a knight. I put the robber on the 8 brick. Then I roll a 7 and put it on the 10 wheat. However, I just made a mistake. Can you spot it? I have to start thinking about how I can use my Monopoly properly, and set up the Monopoly. A lot of times people will wait endlessly for a good time to Monopoly, but they will never get it. That's why you need to set up for the Monopoly. Traditionally, I talk a lot about coordinated roads, or whenever an 8 hits, Hawkeye will be getting a wood and bricks. However, in this situation, since I have a Monopoly, whenever an 8 hits, I get wood, but there's also more brick inside the game. This allows me to do a big move if a few 8s rolls. Since I'm going to have a lot of woods, call a monopoly on brick, then be able to build a lot of roads in one turn. Therefore, I don't want to be blocking the brick, I want to be blocking other spots instead. Fortunately, I roll a 7, and I'm able to move it onto the 10 wheat, freeing up the 8 brick for better monopoly potential. Red rolls a 9, then passes. Brown rolls an 8, then passes. It's my turn. I roll a 9. I want you to pause and think about what I just said. What would you do in my situation? Comment down below your move. I call a Monopoly on the brick. I'm at 7 points. I built a road and a settlement onto the 9 wood, which brings me to 8 points. With that, I drop 2 more roads to connect my roads, that brings me to 7 roads. I drop my last road on the 9 wood, which brings me to 8 roads, which takes longest road, which wins me the game. But don't leave yet. Because let's talk about a few essential Catan tips that help you win your games. The first tip is to set up your monopolies. I made a mistake this game of accidentally blocking the 8 brick. And if that spot was still blocked, then I wouldn't have been able to monopoly to win the game. If you plan to monopoly brick, don't block it. Instead, potentially block the wood so they can't use the brick. The second tip is if you're using a port strategy, the production is key. It's essential that you get your production up first when using the port strategy, as that mitigates the weaknesses of the port strategy of not having enough production and allows the port strategy to use its strengths, the flexibility. The last essential baton tip is to track cards. I know I say this very often, but if I had tracked better and paid more attention to what other people have, the mistake of getting red a city wouldn't have happened. I find the core of most intermediate and advanced level players' mistakes is not tracking well enough. I really do hate asking for likes, but it seriously helps with the YouTube algorithm. This is my job, so I would truly appreciate if you could support me by liking the video. Although I won this game, I definitely made mistakes. This is only one game out of many. The players I'm playing against are tournament veterans and have a lot more tournament experience and skill compared to me. I've done some videos with the USA National Champion before, so if you want to watch those, then click on the playlist on the right. Thank you so much for watching. I'm delighted, and I hope you learned something.